I'm Sabira. That's my Sufi name. I practice Sufism, which is the mystical arm of Islam. We're like the, uh, the flower children of Islam. We're like the hippies of Allah. Okay? Yeah, we're mystics. That's why I have this uh, thing on my head here. It's because I'm a Sufi. My mom's an Irish Catholic and my dad's a Russian Jew, so I like to think of myself as a jew fi <laughs> It was difficult having like a, a Russian Jew dad and an Irish Catholic mom because I hate myself and I feel guilty about it. <laughs> People always say to me, Katie, you're not really Jewish because if you, to be really Jewish, you have to have the Judaism on your mom's side, right? And I have the Judaism on my dad's side. So I'm not really Jewish, I'm just Jew-ish. <laughs> Yeah, so I do, I do practice Sufism. We are mystics, Sufis, which means we're into having like a visceral, immediate relationship with the divine. So we work with the light of God energetically, which means we're very, very open and very, very sensitive and very, very empathetic. I mean, I was always an empath, but after walking on the Sufi path for now, it's crazy. <laughs> I mean, somebody in Kansas has a feeling and I hurt. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> I do have to say though, I am definitely like the rebel Sufi among my Sufi friends. Like when we all go up to the Sufi land to get like all kinds of spiritual and holy and stuff, I like to stand over this one part of the rug that has a flower on it that looks like a penis. Because I think it's entertaining. I'm going, awood billahi min shaitan rajim Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. <laughs> and let's just clarify something right now, you guys, okay? I am not a terrorist, nor am I a fundamentalist. I think it's crazy how right now in our culture, you know, we think anything associated in any way with Islam is terrorism or fundamentalism, you know what I mean? We're like dark skin, head covered, hide the babies! You know what I'm saying? We're scared of it. But it's not true. I mean, there's fundamentalist crazy Muslim people, and there's fundamentalist crazy Jewish people. There's probably fundamentalist crazy porn star people. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Everyone in the world should have sex with strangers for money on camera or we bomb the orphanages. <laughs> In addition to practicing Sufism, I also dabble in another mystical path. It's called alcoholism. I did grow up in an alcoholic family. My dad was an alcoholic. And it was really, you know, it has its challenges, as many of you know, alcoholism in the family. My favorite part, though, about growing up in an alcoholic house was that at one point or another, all of my childhood friends got to see my dad's testicles. <laughs> sure what it is. There's some scientific link between, it's something about doing tequila shots and passing out on the patio in your 1980s runner shorts. You know what I mean? <laughs> that, you know what I mean? The next testicles go, I'm heading for daylight! I'm coming to see the sun! Six-year-old friends would come over and be like, Oh, Katie, your daddy's asleep on the patio. I'm afraid. <laughs> <laughs> because, because, come on, no six-year-old child should be seeing a grown man's testicles, right? That's the worst thing you could see. It's worse than like a dead animal in the road or like a severed limb or like that red thing that comes out of a dog penis. <laughs> Somebody had to talk about that thing. What is that thing? <laughs> I am an alcoholic myself, as many of you know. I am an alcoholic, 10 years sober. Okay. I've learned a few things about the alcoholic personality in the years I've been around. I'm sure you've noticed some of them as well. Alcoholics, for example, we are not people who take suggestions well. Have you noticed? Because we, if you give an alcoholic a suggestion, we take it as an attack on our very soul. 
<laughs> like, I think anyone, anywhere, child, adult, alive, machine, whatever, who's giving me a suggestion is attacking me personally. <laughs> Please return your seat backs at tray tables to their upright and locked position. <laughs> I'm going, don't tell me what to do, lady, I can't see. <laughs> do I look like I don't know how to sit? <laughs> What's next? You gonna tell me what kind of drink I should order? Huh? Or what kind of product I should or should not purchase from the Sky Mall magazine? Because I happen to need a plantar fasciitis orthotic foot sandal. <clears throat> Sky Mall magazine is weird. Do you guys ever read the Sky Mall magazine on an airplane? Right? With all the stuff in it. It's all like randomy stuff. It's like stuff for your lawn and stuff for your kitchen and stuff for your whatever. It's like page one. The way, see, here's the thing. The weird thing about the Sky Mall magazine is there's a sudden Christian section in the middle of it. I, I have no problem with Christianity. I just don't understand why it's in the Sky Mall magazine. Do you know what I mean? It's like page one. Tex the armadillo beverage holder. <laughs> page two. The just laminated outdoor crossword puzzle. <laughs> Page three. I can do all things in Christ, crystal pendant. <laughs> what do those three things have in common? Nothing. I don't understand it. You know what I mean? It's like other magazines don't do this. What if there was a sudden Christian section in the middle of the Victoria's Secret catalog? <laughs> New angel soft sateen underwire uplift bra with matching crutchless Lord's Prayer panties. Because <laughs> even the Virgin Mother liked to hoe it up from time to time. <laughs> I get triggered all the time, you guys. Everything triggers me. You know what triggers me a lot? Street signs. I think they're bossy. <laughs> you know the crosswalk is going, wait, wait, wait. I'm going, for what? Give me a break. I can make it. I'm not 80. Don't tell me what to do. You wait. I'm going. <laughs> and I think stop signs are the most indignant bossy motherfuckers out there. Because a stop sign is always yelling stop. As if I'm always not stopped. Stop! You stop, Octagon. I'm going. My GPS is the worst. Oh. It's the worst. Turn left now. Man, on a bad day, I will smack that thing. You know what I mean? Like, don't tell me what to do. Don't tell me what to do or I'll hit you again and it'll hurt me and that'll show you. Alcoholics, though, I think, uh, here's the thing, Sa self-sabotage, right? We all do it. All humans do it, right? Oh, yes, yes somebody's doing it right now. <laughs> somebody's getting laid at the back of this church with someone inappropriate. <laughs> you know, okay, so I think all humans do this, but I think alcoholics and addicts were worse about it, right? We are much more likely to self-sabotage in the face of success, right? Than in the face of something difficult. If you give a newly sober alcoholic actor a lead role in a Scorsese, Sc Sc that guy. <laughs> if you give him a lead role in a Scorsese film, they're gonna freak the fuck out, right? They're gonna be going, oh my God, I just landed a lead role. They're gonna find out about me and how I'm just a fraud to fake and a failure. I gotta eat or drink or smoke or fuck something. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna eat some donuts, I'm gonna smoke some weed. No, so now I'm gonna smoke some weed, I'm gonna eat some donuts, I'm gonna call my ex. No, I'm gonna fuck my donuts, I'm gonna smoke some weed, call my ex. <laughs> I'm so confused, I need a drink! <laughs> we get desperate in the face of success. We'll smoke or fuck or eat anything if we get freaked out enough. Ma'am, ma'am, is that your pony? I'm gonna need to fuck your pony, ma'am. <laughs> Smoke him, ma'am. <laughs> ma'am, I'm gonna have to ingest your pony in some way! <laughs> Speaking of horses, you guys know this drug, Special K? Do you know this drug, it's not the cereal, the drug. <laughs> Special K, it's 
called ketamine, and it's something that kids do sometimes. This crazy, crazy thing. It's a, it's a horse tranquilizer. Oh yeah, it's a horse tranquilizer. Okay, you know, only an addict or an alcoholic could watch a horse getting tranquilized and go, now see, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> what I mean. That there. I mean, I totally identify with this line of thinking. Hey, if it makes a horse fight fall down, sign me up. <laughs> Clearly. It's difficult to date us alcoholics, don't you guys think? No. <laughs> no. No, it's not a problem at all. It's difficult. It's difficult dating alcoholics because we're so many of us are so afraid of intimacy. You know what I mean? We're so, we don't want anybody getting too close. God forbid people get too close. Yesterday somebody said to me, hey Katie, how you doing? I was like, whoa, 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 friendly Francis. <laughs> we just met, buddy. How am I doing? What am I, your wife? Uh, we're afraid of intimacy, but at the same time, we're terrified to be alone. We're a mess. We're terrified to be alone. We're, like, we're very, come here, go away, come here, go away. You know what I mean? Our whole, all of our, our relationships are like a big game of red light, green light. Go, 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 stop. Go, stop. Go, 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 go stop. You know what I'm saying? And this, my friends, is why it was so much easier for a lot of us. I'll speak for myself. It was so much easier for me when I used to just have one night stands with people. I don't do it anymore, you guys. I can't handle it. I can't do it. But there were certain parts about it that were just a little easier. <laughs> what I mean? Because in a one night stand, there's no intimacy. We don't have to have any talks about shit. <laughs> we don't have to set time aside and process our feelings. Man, I did some crazy shit in some one night stand. You could do whatever you wanted to want. There's no consequences. You want to put cheese doodles in my asshole shirt? Go ahead. <laughs> Fire, probably. I don't care. I don't care. 